Here we are with a, a nice uh, Itegawa juniper. We can say that this is a kind of a show-in size. Uh, the tree was developed uh, in a nursery in Japan for many years. Uh, the uh, deadwood selection was done uh, in the last few years and now the live line are nice and growing very strong. There are still a lot of branches uh, uh, on the trees. The tree is uh, super strong. Uh, we work uh, on juniper only when, the, when they show elongation like this. If the tree is just bushy, we have just to do eventually a little bit of selection because we want always the tree to be as strong as possible when uh, we work on the tree and especially if we're planning to do a first styling, that is something we're doing today on this tree, we want to have a lot of nice extension. Uh, Itegawa juniper is very good uh, as a uh, starting material for uh, beginners, intermediate and even advanced students. Uh, the foliage is very nice and tight. Uh, this particular tree has a very nice and tight foliage, very, very good uh, for shohin size. Uh, you can see the difference from the Itoegawa and the most of the other juniper, normally native juniper from US, either from Europe. Uh, when those native juniper shoot so strong along, they tend to lose the inner foliage. But Itoegawa and Kishu, either if they have a lot of energy in the outside, they have still a lot of nice green in the inside. So eventually when we uh, shape the tree for the first time and we start pruning the tree, we have a lot of nice branches and we can move back the energy inside and keep the development of the maturity of the tree using uh, the inner green. Uh, this tree has a lot of character. There is a lot of uh, movement in the lower part of the trunk. Uh, probably the upper part of the trunk is a little bit more boring, but uh, my plan is to squeeze the tree more together, create something nice and more compact to highlight uh, this uh, wavy trunk uh, in the lower part. Uh, I will see uh, how I'd like to select my first branch uh, and uh, start creating my pads uh, and starting from that point to uh, give a new shape to the entire design. So the first step uh, to start working on this tree and give the first style uh, after understanding that the tree is nice and strong and is ready for its first step uh, is going inside uh, and clean uh, all the first uh, branches coming from uh, the main line of the tree because uh, we don't really need uh, those inner branches and they are eventually annoying us uh, to see exactly how is uh, the structure of the tree. So if we don't see exactly the structure, we can't make a decision. And also in the moment that we're going to reach uh, the wiring time, uh, those branches are going to uh, are not going to help us to be nice and clean on our wiring. So first things first, uh, I will clean the tree and then we're going to analyze uh, all the structure, decide which one is the front, uh, why, which one is the angle, why, if we want to change the angle or not, uh, and then uh, start uh, uh, making all the move uh, to uh, style this tree and give the first shape. So basically when I do the cleaning, uh, I cut everything, the first uh, section of the branches. Uh, so this uh, first section uh, is nice and clean. Uh, eventually, if uh, there are branches coming from the armpit, uh, I'm gonna cut them away. Eventually some branch that is uh, uh, very weak, uh, some branch, uh, that is growing underneath the trunk or underneath the main branches. Uh, it's very, very important uh, to remove uh, everything that for sure is not important uh, for the shape uh, and the future of our tree. And we know we're not gonna use branches that are too weak uh, or branches uh, that are growing in a position that we don't need. For example, on this branch here, we can see and we can uh, decide that this is the top of the branch, uh, this is the bottom of the branch, so for sure I don't need all these branches uh, growing. 
underneath uh, the main line. This is also helping us uh, to give more light in the inside. In the meantime, have these lines uh, ready to be wired and eventually positioned. The same story is for branches uh, coming from the armpit, uh, branches that are very weak. Uh, here we can see I have branches in the inside uh, of this uh, major branch, uh, some growing underneath. Uh, this branch is growing underneath the trunk. Uh, this one is very, very weak, uh, so we can go and cut it off. We just need to work uh, for the first tiling uh, with the good foliage. We need to build uh, the bones uh, for a future good bonsai. So we really want to focus on that, uh, and that's the reason why we do the cleaning. So and in the meantime, while we do the cleaning and we start opening the tree with our hands, uh, we can also figure out uh, which lines uh, are useful for the future design, which branches probably can be cut away, and uh, we can try and start uh, visualizing a project uh, for the tree. Okay, so now we can already see how nice and clean is the tree, okay? And so we can start uh, thinking about the shape. So the tree has a lot of character, as you can see in the lower part of the trunk. There are a lot of nice uh, twists. We have uh, live lines side by side with a nice shari running from the base all over, almost to the apex. Uh, we have a lot of strength in the top. We have another big branch in this position coming kind of from the back of the tree. Uh, we, uh, we have always... Uh, to uh, choose a front and an angle according to the best trunk movement. So here I have a nice movement. The movement on this tree is also very nice because it's three-dimensional. It's not just a tree that is assing up, but is also moving in the tree X. The tree come forward, then go back, and then come forward again. So this can be eventually a possible front. I'm still not thinking about the angle. We're going to uh, decide about the angle later on. Let's have a look uh, and so at some other option. For example, this part here can also be an interesting front. The same reason the trunk is moving nice. Uh, we have uh, some elbow inside of this line, a nice uh, inner line, and then I have a lot of foliage here. I can eventually decide to get rid of this part uh, that is going in the back uh, and just create a nice uh, uh, smaller tree using these branches and pushing these branches down. Uh, on this part, for example, I don't like much the first part of the trunk that is a little bit uh, too straight, so I will need uh, to change the angle a lot uh, to kind of uh, uh, get rid of this defect. From this part, uh, I also have a little bit of better connection with the ground. There are some roots in this side. There is a roots actually here that is crossing on top of a big one. So I can go through with no fear and cut this root off. This tree again is very, very strong and uh, uh, I'm not creating any damage, uh, just uh, cutting this little root uh, away because I have another big one that is uh, the one giving energy to the uh, inner live line. Uh, what we can do is also always uh, trying to bend uh, 
the three together to try to squish uh, again together. So for me, it's not a problem if we end up with the three this high. And uh, what I would like to do is using this branch uh, because it's nice and strong and very ramified. And this branch can be an, inst an interesting first branch of the tree. So uh, always having a first branch coming from a side or even the back of the tree and coming forward welcoming the eyes of the observer is a very good thing because we don't want to create just a sideline that is a b-dimensional line but creating a branch that is doing an arch and hugging us visually is always better to the final shape of the tree so for example this can be a nice interesting branch to become the first branch of my tree in case i'm going to use this as a front better than a branch like this one that is already very frontal and i have to push the branch back to then create my first uh, pad. I have a lot of branches that are very useful for depth, uh, coming all from this uh, live line. If I use this front, uh, eventually I have to select uh, a lot of them and I risk also that, uh, for example, selecting this uh, as a new, uh, as, um, uh, as a gin because I don't need it. Uh, if I look at the tree from here, I'm gonna lose one of the two live lines. So to preserve both live line is better always to use as much foliage as possible. So said that, uh, what we can do is uh, see the tree a little bit backwards like this, so we can show a little bit more the trunk. Also, we can cut away some of these inner branches and open the view of the observer to the entire uh, alpha of the tree, where we see all the trunk. We can still uh, push the trunk together and show this elbow and then uh, we can use uh, either these guys uh, to recreate our apex uh, on top uh, of the vertical of the tree. Having a tree that is nice and dynamic with a very good uh, first branch uh, in the left side and then we can still keep some green uh, in the right side to rebalance all the movement. So decided that my strategy and decided my final goal for today, for the first time, I have to remove the branches that I don't need. So as I said, these two inner branches, uh, they can go. I leave a little bit uh, of a stick from this one that eventually I can transform in a gin. The other one is too young and I take it away completely. And then the next one will be this branch that is the one competing uh, the branch I want to use uh, for my main branch. So I'm going to cut this one. Now that I visualize my design, uh, in my mind uh, and I select the branches I'm sure I don't need. Uh, I let a little stick. I'm going to clean those and transform in little gin and then I'm going to wire everything and at the end uh, I squeeze the structure together and create the shape of the tree. As you can see I haven't pruned uh, these branches uh, even if for sure I'm not going to need them for all their length but I still don't know how long I need to create my tree nice and compact. And the same for the first branch. I still don't know how long I need my pad to be according to the final design. So what I like to do on Juniper, where they have nice extension, I wire always all the lines. And then when I start setting the branches, I can get clear idea of the length and the volume of the shape I'm giving to the tree. And I can start shorting it back. So now that the tree is nice and clean, I have all my lines ready to be wired. I want to start putting the first structural wire between the two stronger lines of the tree. One is the main branch and one is the apex. 
So connecting these two lines, uh, I can create a linking point uh, that apart uh, helping me to move uh, down this part and forward and eventually bend uh, also this down, I can use the wire also as linking point uh, to eventually put a guy wire and squish uh, the, the, the upper part of the tree together. The lower part is nice and compact. Here I have uh, too much length uh, and I need to squeeze the tree together. I don't want to lose uh, the option of having this green just cutting the pa this part away and substituting with a little branch. I want to try to create a, a styling that is uh, as full as possible and also because the tree is very nice and twisty I'm not scared to have also some twist in the top. So that two part will match nicely. So I already select my piece of wire. The wire has to be one fourth of the size of the branch. We can always decide to overwire or go uh, smaller according to the type of work. Normally on a first uh, uh, work on a tree, especially if I have to do some uh, uh, structural work in this part, I prefer to overwire a little bit. So my wire now is a third of the first branch here, but it's still a little bit smaller than a fourth uh, for this part because I'm also using a guy wire. So the second thing I have to think uh, is uh, where is gonna go this branch uh, and uh, where I'm gonna twist this guy. So because this is a left branch and it's gonna go down uh, and forward, I'm gonna wire this branch counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is gonna bend the branch down in the main time, it's gonna hold the fiber of the tree and holding the branch in position. Always when I put a piece of wire, I want the two part of the wire go in the opposite position, so the anchor point is always a U. So if I can U anchor between this branch and the wire that goes up, I'm gonna have this one counterclockwise and this part clockwise that is actually helping me to bring this part more back and twisting in that direction. So let's create our U anchor and then starting from the anchor that actually is in this position, we're gonna wire the two sides. First of all, I'm gonna go clockwise up to the main trunk line because it's the thicker part and will act like, like an anchor and then I'm gonna wire the branch and finish the wiring up to the uh, top. So the first branch will go down and forward, so the, the wiring will be counterclockwise, while the other half going up to the main structural line of the apex will go up clockwise direction. So now I need to twist the tree like this and put the wire. As soon as I think that my wire is becoming too big for the branch uh, and uh, I'm having inner branches suitable to be matched uh, one to the other, I'm gonna cut the, the wire. I always try to cut my big wire underneath the branch uh, so the cut will be not on top and will be very evident to the eye. So now that the first branch is wired, I can go through and finish wiring the top. Now that the first structural wire is uh, on the tree, as I said, I create my anchor and then I run the uh, counterclockwise to the main branch, uh, first branch uh, and uh, clockwise up to the top. I have uh, 
the secondary line. So I go for size. I don't wire thinking inside, outside or lower, upper, because these three still structural need to, need to be built. I start always from the bigger branch. I wire the bigger line and then I, I uh, size down my wire according to the next branches. So now you can see in the back of the tree, I have these two branches and these two branches. So I want to try to match uh, two by two and create a good anchor around the trunk and wire them out. Always thinking a little bit of the direction. So always clockwise or counterclockwise according to the position I want to put them. And then I can move uh, to the apex where I have another three branches. So probably I'm going to wire one of these two up to the apex and then the other I will just re-anchor. And so also my secondary branches will be wired and then I can downsize and go with the smaller one. because uh, I have an odd branch. I use the base of another one that I already wired as an anchor for my single branch. So always using the rule one piece of wire to direction. So now all my lower branches are nicely wired and I can move them in every position I need. So this is anchor here, these two and these two are the two pair and always uh, the anchor is a nice uh, U. Now I can concentrate uh, on the three um, intermediate branch left and then I downsize the wire on the other one left. Another thing while I'm wiring, I always try to stay in front of the branch that I'm wiring and I try always to have uh, the branch that I'm wiring at the high of my chest. So my arm is always uh, 
working from inside, pulling the wire outside. I don't have to lift my shoulders uh, and uh, I don't get tired uh, very uh, fast uh, because I'm working uh, in an uh, uncomfortable position. What I like to say is that one of my hand is the older and the other hand is the twister. So the older stays always uh, attached to the branch and help me to open the little branches and make uh, room for the wire while uh, the twister from outside always uh, pull the wire and twist uh, the wire around uh, the branch uh, stepping up uh, the wire with nice steps and nice angles. What angle do you recommend? So normally I recommend an angle between uh, 60 degrees uh, and 70 degrees uh, or depend uh, of uh, the type of work, 45 or 60 degrees. If you want to have more old, you do 45, 60. If you have want to just move branches and you want to stay a little bit more open, you do 60 to 70. So now all my secondary branches are wired. You can see how the tree look like crazy because while I wire, I also open all the branches in different position, filling different spaces so I can always have uh, my attention to the single branches and see what's going on, how many other branches I need to wire, which branch is not wired yet, uh, and every branch uh, is uh, filling a space. If I wire and I push the branches together, this is not good to keeping my attention to what still need to be wired. That's the reason why I always open everything. So now I can concentrate in areas and I can get, for example, all the secondary branches coming from the first branch wired that are very small and long and then already finished some wire on these little guys here until everything is wired from the lower part up and then I will be ready to style the tree. So now we are at the end of the wiring, everything is wired, so starting from the structure, secondary branches, smaller and then side by side me and my assistant Walter, we wired all the little foliage up to the top, so everything that has a little bit of strength is wired, so can be positioned and put in the right position. As I said originally, you can see how all my branches are open, so I can really focus to the exact position I want to put them. I don't...